Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I had a subscriber ask a question and I know his question is specifically about boxing, but you know what? This same thing can be applied to anyone who adds in a bunch of new conditioning work and they start having uh, strength reduction in the gym. So I'm going to flip in his question here and we have a guy who basically has said that uh, he started boxing really hard uh, six weeks ago. All of his lifts are going down. He's lost about three kilos, but he looks like he's only lost fat, so he doesn't understand why his lifts are going down. Uh, considerably considering you know he's only lost again three kilos that's for people who don't use kilos it's about a pound a week and uh, it's only fat loss so what's going on all right let me uh, put on my plus five out of weapon smithing let's do a little bit of crafting and uh, let's talk about it here all right cliff notes for those who don't like the long videos basically any new conditioning work particularly that burns a lot of calories is going to have some negative training stimulus at first. Even adding large amounts of list cardio can in the short term. It can affect your strength. You're going to need time to adapt to it first of all. Number two, uh, quick weight loss. And I'm sorry if you're a, a fairly healthy person at a healthy body fat, um, losing a pound a week is pretty fast uh, fat loss. You're going to lose some strength with that. It's almost unavoidable without drugs probably a little bit fast for you to maintain your strength. If you're fatter and fluffier, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, guys, you're at a healthy body fat, athletic body fat, that's going to be quite a bit. You're going to lose some strength as a result of that. Uh, you're going to need to start eating more. So let's go into a little more details of what's going on here. First of all, new conditioning work. Uh, boxing is actually fantastic conditioning work, by the way. Um, I mean, as far as a conditioning sport goes itself, boxing is, you have to be in pretty fantastic shape to be a really good boxer. The conditioning usually required is phenomenal. And uh, boxers in general, they're just known for their conditioning. Uh, boxing is great for that. Even that extra stuff you do around boxing, all the extra jump rope and everything else with it. It's um, very conditioning intensive. You're going to be in good shape, though, from doing this after a while, that's for sure. Uh, it's great for that. Boxing is great for getting into shape just all around, all around good shape. But the downside, you're doing a lot of conditioning work, my man. Uh, your body can only handle so much training adaptation and stimulus in a given time frame. You're subjecting your body to a totally new type of training that is different from your weight training in addition to it. Your body is now gonna spend some time adapting to that and getting better at that. It's gonna have to build speed strength, it's gonna have to build conditioning, endurance, extra agility, all sorts of stuff to go with what you're throwing at it in the boxing. That's going to detract from your training for a little while. Your weight training, you're going to have to accept that you, you know, can't always master everything at one time because you've gone into it full steam. You're going to get weaker for a little while. But you know what? If you get your training on point uh, and get your diet back on point, you will adapt to it and you will be able to get your strength back and start progressing again in the gym. But what I'm going to recommend you do in the meantime, um, you probably need to drop the standard sort of training that you're doing. Uh, for your lifting and probably go on some sort of concurrent training, some sort of concurrent periodization. Uh, again, kind of like what Alex Viata has people do in his hybrid athlete book and his advice that he gives for his athletes who compete in multiple endeavors at the same time. Uh, some sort of concurrent work, which means you're going to need to have days where you focus more on power, days you focus more on volume. You're going to need to run them concurrently in the same week so you can keep multiple training elements uh, trained in the gym so that you detrain less from any one given stimulus. Um, number two, you're going to have to back your workloads down a little bit. Uh, you're overtaxing yourself with the boxing training. You're going to have to cut your volume back on your lifting. Maybe even cut it in half to half the number of sets you're normally doing. Uh, again, cut the fluff out. You're not going to have room for a lot of extra isolation fluff. Focus on what matters, what's important. Uh, for now, I would say focus upon getting your strength back on point and stabilizing it so that you don't lose any more strength because that's going to be a bit real big deal here which means again some concurrent type training and then once you're able to start gaining strength again you can start progressing on that but until your body has had a while to adapt to all this boxing and conditioning work um, i wouldn't really run any sort of serious progression no block periodization definitely no linear progression type programs uh, it's just not going to work so run like uh, again concurrent type periodization or an undulating periodization Without real focus on progression, bring the volume back in check. You need to remember, a lot of guys do high volume training for the extra conditioning and the extra calorie burn. It's not doing a lot else for you outside of that. 
your boxing is going to handle that for you. All the conditioning work you're doing with boxing is going to handle your conditioning. It's going to handle your endurance. You don't need to focus on that in the weight room. The weight room, you need to focus on holding on to your strength and holding on to your size. All right. And that means you don't need that many sets per exercise or per body part to pull that off. Very, very few sets. You can probably cut the volume in half from whatever you're doing and you're going to be okay. Uh, the other thing's going to be diet related. Um, you're losing weight way too fast. You're probably not getting enough carbohydrates in to keep up with your weight training and all of this boxing work. I mean, I know boxing is conditioning related, but there's also a lot of fast punching. There's a lot of power involved. You're burning through a lot of glucose. Um, you're going to need more fuel to train on. You're going to need to get that scale moving back up because you're losing weight by adding extra conditioning work in. And your lifts are going down, and that tells me you're simply not getting enough carbohydrates in. Carbohydrates are your primary training fuel, and you're trying to mix multiple endeavors at the same time, boxing and lifting. Uh, you need more carbs, flat out. Up your carbs. Up your carbs until you go back to gaining weight. Uh, you don't have to gain a lot, but what I would focus on is trying to gain a half a kilo a week again while doing all this extra conditioning work. Uh, for at least a couple of weeks and you can stabilize it down down to about a fourth of a kilo a week But until you regain some of that weight that you've lost you're not going to get your strength back But fortunately, you know look at it this way if you've lost strength you probably have lost a little muscle mass in there. But you're going to regain it really really fast Particularly if you do it by upping the carbs and regaining strength in the gym uh, What I'm going to recommend though because you sound like that's the issue that's going on make sure you're getting plenty of carbs in right before you weight lift. Make sure you're getting plenty of carbs before you do your boxing and make sure that you're replenishing your glycogen after the boxing. Make sure that you're carb loading heavy after you box. And the reason for that is because obviously your boxing training is separate from your lifting. If you're not getting proper glycogen replenishment after that boxing work, enough carbs to restore all the glycogen that you've lost and to handle any weight loss that you're having to reverse that, Without that big carb loading after that boxing training, it is going to negatively impact your performance on your lifting. Getting those carbs in, in between the two, is the most important thing you could possibly do right now. Normally, I tell guys, meal timing matters less than 1% for most people. You are mixing two intense endeavors at the, at the same time. You're the sort of person that uh, meal timing actually matters for. It's going to make a big difference in your performance, and that's because you're mixing multiple different serious training endeavors at the same time. Most people only train like once a day. Most people only train one thing seriously. They aren't doing really intense conditioning work with really intense lifting uh, in the same week. Uh, their their meal timing just isn't as important. For someone who's doing what you're trying to do, it's gonna matter a lot. And making sure that you get enough carbs between finishing your boxing work and doing your weightlifting is important. And I really hope you're not trying to do them the same day afterwards. Uh, that's going to be a disaster. You need to split those up on different days. And if you have to have some overlap on the same days, you need to do the boxing after the lifting. If you care about your strength, you're going to need to make sure that you get a little rest in between, at least a nap, uh, get some extra carbs in in between. And again, most importantly, post boxing carbs until that scale starts coming back up. Because until that scale weight starts coming back up, your strength isn't going to come back. So, to recap what someone needs to do to do what you're trying to do. Uh, again, concurrent style training for now. Uh, try to hold on to your strength. And you're going to hold on to your strength by reducing the total volume. And training your heavy days with your, your lighter, higher rep days on different days. So concurrent style training. Again, cutting the volume back, doing just enough volume to maintain or hopefully start gaining strength. Again, you don't need more than one to three sets per exercise to do that. If you're coming in and doing 15 sets of body part uh, while trying to do what you're doing with all this boxing conditioning, that's why you're losing strength on top of it. That's going to exacerbate. It's going to make it worse. You don't need to do all that. Remember, high volume training is generally conditioning based is the reason you're doing it for the extra conditioning. Your boxing handles that. Uh, so get that training sorted and you need to up your carbs. More carbohydrates. 
till you start gaining weight again. You're going to need to regain some of that weight you've lost, but you know it's going to come back as muscle weight, and then it's going to come back as uh, muscle glycogen weight. Uh, again, and I suspect with the weight that you're losing and the way you're describing the strength loss, you're, you're too glycogen depleted. There's just not enough carbohydrates being stored in your muscles for training fuel. So again, the other thing is going to be meal timing, making sure you get pre-workout carbs, making sure you get pre-boxing carbs, and making sure that you get a lot of carbs post-boxing. That's going to be your big thing right there. That post-conditioning work, boxing work, carbohydrate loading is what's going to affect your next lifting session the most. And uh, until you get that strength back, you are at risk of losing some muscle mass. So that's going to be the most critical part of that meal timing, replenishing that glycogen after the conditioning work. That's going to make or break you right there, my brother. And you need to do that, and you need to start slowly bringing that scale weight back up. And you know what? When it's all said and done, though, uh, the boxing is going to carry over to your overall fitness. The conditioning that you're developing from it in the long term, once you get the food right and you get the training right and you're replenishing your glycogen, that extra conditioning work you're doing is going to start improving your recovery. It's not going to do it for now, but six months from now, nine months from now, you're going to be recovering better from your weightlifting as a result of being more cardiovascularly fit and being more conditioned. It's actually going to help you in the long term. So what you're doing, I think, is a good thing for your overall fitness, particularly if you really like lifting and you really like the boxing and it's something you enjoy and it's really fun for you. Um, I, I think it's really going to help you in the long term to find a conditioning thing like that that you really love doing. Um, it's going to help you be more well-rounded with your fitness and it's going to help improve your capillarization and your ability to clear waste products out of your muscle cells. In the long term, that's going to make you stronger on your lifts in the gym because you're going to recover better. Uh, recovery is a big deal. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.